season one, episode one, brainstorming. This is my homework. Uh, we just got done with our episode about forming the idea and the brainstorming episode in which we came up with the concept for the illustrated children's book. And now it's time for Carlos and I to break off and do our allotted assignments, our homework as we're calling it. And in this episode, we're going to be doing some sketching, some brainstorming uh, about our lead characters. We've already established that we have uh, an adopted robot boy uh, that's timid and kind of uh, has, has been sheltered and has hovering parents. And then we also have a monster character who's probably a little bit big and brooding, um, but is mostly misunderstood and probably has the lovable side so something maybe that could be a little bit fluffy hairy uh, kind of like a big dog or a bear um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about what inspires me to um, design characters so I'm gonna share some stuff so that one of the first things I do when I'm uh, gonna do a project as I first go and research I can't stress enough the power and the importance of research. It's a, it's a great way to refresh your brain uh, just from all the things you've seen over your life and everything that's around you and what's already been done and just kind of get yourself, get a really good feel for what you're about to do. And it's not that you're gonna go copy what's done, but it's just, it's a great way to spawn ideas because all ideas kind of spawn from something else. And we're just kind of uh, amalgamations of everything we've ever witnessed. So it's 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 just like a great launch plat pad um, and collecting ideas and even seeing what artists have already uh, done and what problems they've already solved. So one of the first places I jump to is Pinterest. Um, it's just it's just an amazing, amazing tool, an easy way to to gather. It's kind of like making an inspiration board back in the day when you, you know you cut out pictures from a magazine and collected them. You you just simply can make a board with all of the images that are you can collect them off the web you know off of blogs and other art sites and you just bring them all here off other pinners uh, on pinterest who, who've already established um, collected pin boards and it's just like a great way to you make like i just make a board for the project i'm about to work on and then i just start collecting stuff and it's it's just so fast and so easy so i've already typed typed in um cute monster character mainly because i kind of already have a pretty good idea of what i think i'd like to do with the robot uh his character just sticks with me a little bit more but the monster i'm not i'm not quite sure of his personality so i'm going to research him first so i just type in cute monster character and you just start getting all sorts of stuff you know like this is super fun it's like very cartoony and i think probably none of these guys are are quite brooding or or angry enough but it's you just grab what you, what what grabs your attention and then you pin it to your board so carlos and i have created a process projects pin board that you can go ahead and follow and you just simply pin it and it's there um, and the cool thing is it actually makes recommendations so down here you might also like illustration and so it leads you to this other person's board that they've already started collecting illustration. It seems like he's mostly um, focused on actual illustration and not just uh, monsters, but sometimes you can find an actual themed board what you were just searching for. So I just kind of go down the list here and I'm like, oh, this crazy rabbit's kind of fun. I like, I like the teeth, the fact that he's a big, he's hairy. I think the fluffiness, the hairiness kind of gives him a, a likability, a softness. Um, but I love his silhouette and his bean shape. So, you know, you just quickly collect, just scroll through, and it's kind of like whatever grabs your attention first. It's it's not even about obsessing over details or, you know, looking for the perfect thing you're going to rip off, because really it's more about just quickly seeing what's done, what grabs your attention, and what do you like about it? You want to focus a lot on what is it about that, art that just grabs you and works for what you're looking to do like this I see this and I'm like oh wow cool and as I think what I immediately reacted to was he's on all fours and he's got this massive jaw that's just like although he's cute and he's smiling it's like he's got this massive jaw that I feel like could be really dangerous so you just kind of keep doing that until you find a bunch of stuff that you like so what we've actually done this is my page you can go ahead and follow me uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here for your reference. 
I've got an illustration board with all kinds of just general illustration. I've got one specifically for design and print, one of characters and design, uh, you know, travel because I think locations around the world are super inspirational, not just because I want to travel there, but you know, if you're designing an environment, there's all sorts of stuff that I just think is so cool on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the process projects pin board Carlos and I have started and what you can see is we've both added a bunch of stuff on here so I've just collected all sorts of shapes and sizes I seem to have picked a lot of hairy monsters so I think I think the hairiness furriness is really important in, in, in making a big brooding monster feel a little bit soft but then we've also collected a bunch of robots on here and I really like this stocky short character with a big head. I think there's something kind of cute. And even though this guy's evil, there's something cute and funny about him. So this one's really cool. I love this shape. I love uh So then there's some really cool ones that, you know, are kind of unexpected. Like this, this is very, you know, Edward Gorey, this, <laughs> Don Ken is a great artist. He just draws these very Edward Gorey-esque characters. And this is, it kind of reminds me of a Sesame, the Sesame Street characters, the, the two-headed monster. But, you know, he's just, he's made him furry. And although he's angry and kind of scary, nightmarish looking, there's something really funny and kind of comical about him. So, you know, and then there's these these neat ones that actually take place in an environment. And, you know, you're not necessarily just looking for a character. You're trying to evoke a mood. Um, and there's something very moody about this. You get a very good sense of an environment in which the character lives. And this guy's enjoying enjoying a bath by the funny little grin. But apparently he has removable eyeballs. You know, that's probably not what we're looking for. But there's some, some really great stuff in here in terms of color. There's a great color palette. The fur, the blue fur stands out on the, the, the red background. It's great use of, you know, kind of complementary colors. Um, this is one that I found that I just fell in love with, and I think mainly because it, it kind of seems like something I would draw. It sticks to my style. But, uh, you know, Anna Bronk is just, these silhouettes to me are so strong. Every single one of them stands out. If you saw them in a lineup, you'd be able to pick out who's who. But the other thing she did really well is she followed a lot of you know traditional design, tried and true, tested design rules. You know she's got large negative spaces, so like things that are large tend to be negative, meaning you know they don't have a lot of detail. So that although they're big and they draw your eye, there's not stuff to distract you to draw your eye. So then the small areas, uh, although they're small, they have a lot of detail. So it's a great you know contrast of, and she's kind of done that with every single character. You know there's a a big negative space and a small detail space and I think that's just a really effective way of not just doing contrast uh, in colors traditionally you thought but contrast in terms of um, de where details are located and shape and sizes and she's also kind of nailed and figured out that the question that I always talk about with my characters is that I sometimes go back and forth, should they have beady little dot eyes or should they have full human eyes in order to emote and you know get the, the proper range of emotions that we're looking for. And there's something really funny about dot beady eyes. They're very mysterious and you don't really get a full sense of what the character's thinking. So you can get this kind of lost, uh, aloof or even you know naive look, especially for little kids. You get these, you can get these kind of just really innocent and naive look but what that does is it limits you from the, the emotion of the, the wide eyes that have pupils and um, so it's definitely a balance and it's something to think about so really the whole purpose you know is just get as much research uh, research and reference as you can we've even got some stuff from from our friends uh, DaCosta Bailey chocolate soup who's just just the master at, at doing cute and cool and he just does these super clean, kind of retro but modern robots, and they're always so cute. They just have like he does. He a lot of, a lot of times does the little dot eyes, but there's so much emotion here. He really successfully um, does the little black dot eyes, but with full fledged emotion. And you know his shape and his volume 
I mean, his silhouettes are just great. He's got a really great sense of, of, of mass, you know, even though this is all 2D, there's just a great sense of volume and mass and shape here. So getting on Pinterest or Im Google Images or Behance or, you know, whatever, DeviantArt, whatever is your choice. You can even go through old page through old comic books and magazines, wherever you just want to get some reference for whatever topic you're, you're about to do. Uh, and I don't really suggest dwelling on one image and trying to figure out how they did that, that character. Because um, it's really more just about being like, what do I like? Like the creature box characters, I just love the silhouettes and the juxtaposition of volumes. You know, it's like these two are complete opposites of each other. You know, this guy's got a huge bottom and a tiny head. And this guy's got a huge head and a tiny bottom and they, they, they balance the details perfectly. Um, you know, he's got very little detail around here. His stomach is very plain. And then you come up here where it's like, let's focus on his giant head. And there's just these funny little teeth and the, the uh, just everything about these are so great and their color palette. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, I want to obsess and figure out how they made that monster. But I really want to focus on, you know, contrast of size, silhouettes, um, and, and kind of traditional design rules. So just jump on Pinterest, go ahead and you can join our boards. It's just such an easy way to get started. So I'm gonna design some stuff for the robot and, and I'm really I'm really interested in silhouettes here and uh, the contrast in size and shape. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's easy to start with with some simple shapes, like some cylinders and some some giant spheres. And I'm really gonna work loose here. I'm not gonna fill in a whole lot of details. I'm just gonna um, start breaking stuff out. So, you know, we can do stuff like that. Obviously a box uh, is very mechanical feeling. Maybe he's got two boxes. Um, and immediately I can say, I don't like this because uh, although it's short and clunky and kind of cute. Um, it doesn't really have a great silhouette. You know, he's just a box and there's no contrast here. It's just kind of like, eh, it's two boxes stacked on top of each other. But I do like this. I like something about the big head and the little body. So, you know, even just like small, working small, maybe we don't, maybe we don't do legs. Maybe we want uh, a set of wheels. We could do uh, we could do wheels on the side, kind of like that. And then, you know, some stuff about how would how would his mouth work? Is it a little hatch? Is it a uh, you know? Is it one of these panels that stick in? Does it have a hinge? Is there a hinge mechanism? Is there a button on here? Uh, what do we think about? A screw for a nose, you know, something. I'm just getting really rough. So anyway, um, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of little designs, little thumbnails. I'm going to keep it really loose, keeping it really, really, really loose. I don't want to get into any major details because right now I'm just kind of focused on silhouette, general sense of character, contrast of sizes. And I'm really focused on those eyes, you know, I'm I'm wondering if the little dots are, are good or if I want to do full emotional eyes. The other thing I'm kind of interested in is should it be an actual robot or or do we want to do uh, kind of a more human human-esque android type character? Maybe maybe we can actually get more out of the character if we design it like a little boy that just kind of looks robotic. So anyway, there you have some basic robot designs. I'm pretty happy. So there you are. I have some... Okay, so there we go. I've got some really cool robot designs. There's a couple that I'm really happy with, but I'm not going to go into too much discussion because this is homework. And I want to talk about it with Carlos in our next meeting, so be sure to follow the next one. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, 
I'm gonna do, design some monsters. And the thing about the monster is, is he's gotta be brooding. He's gotta be big and, and aggressive, but he's also gotta have uh, something about him that's lovable, that's likable, that you know, you wanna learn something from this character. He's got something to offer and they're believable as friends. So again, I really wanna focus on on contrast and if we remember some of the stuff we saw online you had these big upper bodies so small upper bodies or small lower bodies and vice versa uh, again I'm gonna keep it really loose I really don't want to focus on details you know something with tiny little feet might be funny if he's got some claws kind of come out uh, and then it's kind of you can really drastically change a character just based on where you place his eyes. You know, you put him way up here and he kind of looks uh, innocent and uh, and very not aggressive at all. But, you know, you can put him down here and now he looks similar, but it's like with the big head he looks smarter and he looks more, uh, what's the word? He looks more like he's he's friendly, whereas the other one looks a little more aloof. So, but what I think is I think we want to put, to put his eyes up here and, you know, remember, we're trying to create something that's kind of brooding and he's a monster, he's not a robot, so we don't have to go with these, these mechanical shapes. Maybe he's got some cat in him. Maybe he's even got some ears. Uh, now, the hands, I think since this guy has a small mouth, his mouth isn't very menacing, he needs to have something that's... that's you know, something that's kind of violent about him. So maybe these giant claws. Um, the other option, you know, is you reverse that. You do a small on top, small on top, bigger on the bottom. So then that maybe that means he's got these chunky legs. You know, he's got kind of like elephant feet. I remember seeing that on one of the one of the ones we saw. Maybe he's got a different colored patch of fur. And although he's got big arms, maybe he's got small hands to soften him just slightly. And again, I'm staying so loose that's just it's just kind of scribbles at this point. I mean anything maybe 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 the hair is not a good idea but you know I've also thought about the like uh, the dog with the hair over his eyes so we're gonna do some speed ones now and I'm just gonna bust out a bunch of shapes here's some stuff with different different shapes different sizes we're just gonna have fun uh -huh. 